Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in this week's video I'm going to start telling you about all the books that I managed to finish in the month of March. I say start telling you because I managed to finish 11 books this month. One of those was less than 100 pages but I'm still counting it. So that means I've made really good progress with bringing down my TBR this month because only one of the books that I bought this month did I purchase this month and that was one of the allowed books that I was allowed to purchase. There's been no additional book buying um, so I haven't broken my ban again this month so I'm doing really really well and also I've managed to just about get halfway through my Goodreads goal. I set that at 48 for the year and in total up to the end of March I finished 23 books. So my reading year is looking really great so far and I'm feeling really proud of what I have managed. I'm just hoping that the rest of the year carries on in the same vein. So without further ado let's actually talk about the books that I finished. And the first one that I finished is The Last Pendragon by Sarah Woodbury. This is the first book in a serialisation of novels set around, not quite around the legends of Arthur, it's actually a few generations on from Arthur, but it's about a young man, Cade, who is the last of the Pendragon line, and a young woman that he meets called Rianne, and she is the daughter of one of Cade's enemies. Um, Cade is captured by his enemy and Rianne helps him escape and along the way they find out that Cade actually has some powers uh, which are quite scary powers because they're, they're supposedly thought of as demonic powers um, but Cade tries to use them for good rather than for evil. Uh, in this first portion of the story we get their meeting, we start to see them falling in love and becoming a couple uh, because it is also a romance series. It's a very, very short uh, book. It's not very long at all. Um, so I did whip through it very, very quickly and it got my reading month off to an excellent start. I only gave it three stars. However, I am looking forward to reading more and I'm just not investing in the series yet, but it is definitely on my series that I want to continue at some point list. And the second book that I finished in the month of March was the second wheel spin of the month. So the last uh, Pendragon was actually the first wheel spin for the month of March. And this next book was the second wheel spin. And that is The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. And this is a book that I have no idea why I've never read it before. I have listened over and over again to the musical version written by Jeff Wayne and I adore the story, absolutely adore it. Um, and I just don't know why I've never gotten around to reading the actual story that that is based on um, in, in the past. I've, I know I've tried it before and I tried it. It wasn't on the Kindle app. It was on another um, e-reading app um, on my phone quite a few years ago. And I struggled a little bit with the way that that app actually worked. It wasn't the book. It was the way the app worked. Because as soon as I picked it up, I know the first paragraph of the opening lines of the War of the Worlds musical version uh, really, really quite well. And the first page of the actual story itself, um, you can see that uh, Jeff Wayne actually borrowed really heavily from the text, from the narration text of the book to write the narration in the actual musical version. So I started out this book with a massive smile on my face because then all of a sudden I had Richard Burton in my head narrating the book to me. Um, so it got me off to a really great start. So like I say, I don't understand why I've never picked it up before. But I managed to make it all the way through and I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you've been living under a rock all your life and you've never heard of this book, Basically, it's a science fiction classic novel and it's about an alien invasion from Mars um, to Earth. And it's about how that invasion plays out. Uh, we follow this perspective in the main of a journalist who I think, uh, yeah, so the journalist is from Horsell and the he uh, witnesses the unscrewing and the opening of the original uh, vessel that comes to earth um but he survived so we then 
follow his uh, progression through the story and it's all told from his perspective which I really enjoyed because it wasn't some it wasn't military and it wasn't political it was just Joe Bloggs off the street telling you the story and I thoroughly enjoyed it I just smiled my whole way through um so like I say I'm I'm so disappointed in myself for never picking it up before it's been sat on my kindle almost since I owned one um so it's been on my kindle for about nine years at this point uh so I'm disappointed myself for not reading it before and it's one that I think I will definitely come back to and try and reread again in the future um obviously not this year because I'm trying to reduce my TBR uh, so it won't be this year, but definitely this is going to be on my reread list for the future. I gave it four stars. I really can't gush any more about it than I already have. Um, but if you want um, to see where sci-fi started, one of the earliest sci-fi novels that are out there that I've been able to find anyway, um, then give The War of the Worlds a go. And uh, if you are disappointed in me for not reading it before, then please now be proud of me for finally getting to it. And book number three that I finished this month is the In Death Read Along book and that was Purity in Death by J.D. Robb. I've talked about these books a lot over the last 15 months so I don't think I really need to go too much into what they're about other than that we follow the main character Eve Dallas who is a homicide detective in 2050s New York and in this book she has to find and catch a terrorist cell who are somehow using technology to murder people and they are they have good intentions but you can see how those good intentions could be twisted so it's a race against time to stop the terror cell before they start taking matters too far themselves again you'll get lots of progression of eve's relationships personal relationships professional relationships and as always, I enjoyed reading it. I gave it four stars like I normally do. And I just, as always, immediately wanted to dive into the next book, but I held off because that way lies danger because I will just end up binge reading and then get fed up with them. So I really enjoyed it and it just kept the momentum after reading the first two books really quite quickly in the month. It kept the momentum going and I'm glad I didn't use it as the first book for the month. Um, but I'm glad that I did um, read it quite early on because, like I say, they just give me momentum to keep going because they are such a fun read. So from there, I decided this month that I wasn't going to read the book club pick because that was where the crawdads sing. And I only read it in December last year, so I only read it a few months ago anyway. And I decided that actually it was too soon to read it again. Plus my mum was reading it or attempting to read it at the time. Um, so I wanted to try and give her a bit more time because she was struggling a little bit. And I felt that maybe it was a case of right book, wrong time for her rather than the fact that it wasn't a book that she'd enjoy. Um, so I decided that actually I wouldn't pick up the book club pick. But we were still only a week into March. Yes, I was a week into March and I decided I needed to find something else to read. So I went back through my Kindle and I tried to find a book that took my fancy. So I think I went back to kind of like the as early as I could books that were on my TBR bought in previous Marches. And the book that I came across was The McKinnon's Bride by Tanya Ann Crosby. This is a romance novel set in the Scottish Highlands um, and it's at a time when there's still a lot of conflict between Scotland and England. Um, Henry, one of the Henrys is on the throne, can't remember which one, um, but there's some conflict and the laird, Ian McKinnon, his son has been kidnapped and he's had to travel into England to get him back. Um, while he is trying to do that, he comes across the daughter of the man who has kidnapped his son or is holding his son um, in his castle. And he decides to reciprocate and he takes Paige, kidnap, um, kidnaps her himself um, because he's going to try and use her as a bargaining chip to get his son back. Sadly, that doesn't work. 
and Paige's father tells Ian that he can keep her for all he cares. Ian does manage to get his son back though, he manages to convince the um, English noble to give him his son back, he makes other threats which work. Sadly he's then left with Paige. Um, he doesn't want to tell Paige though that her father basically said, no, I don't want her back, you can keep her for all I care. So he lies to her and says that he's breaking his word. So then they have to journey back to Scotland and across this journey Paige is trying to escape because she wants to get back to her father, not realising that her father never wanted her at all. And Ian is trying to keep the truth from her, um, but also they're falling in love at the same time. And it makes for some quite funny uh, instances between them, happenings between them. Um, needless to say, Ian is actually really quite, he is actually quite respectful of Paige though, other than the fact that he took her hostage in the first place. Um, he is quite respectful of the fact that Paige is a young woman with um, a group of men who are, I can't think of the right word right now, but yes, they're, they have needs and they initially initially they the men i think are not quite so respectful to Paige as ian is so he takes her under his wing and says no she's mine i'm taking care of her and it leads to them talking quite a lot and getting to know each other quite well and falling in love by the time they reach um ian's hold in scotland they have well and truly fallen in love and Paige has found out that actually Ian had been lying to her and her father didn't want her back at all. So they, um, she decides to stay and she decides to marry him. Unfortunately, by this stage, uh, Paige's father has decided that she is important to him because she can be used in other ways and he comes to rescue her. There is another plot going on though because there is still the, we don't know who kidnapped um, Ian's son either. So there's all of this plot to play out. So that also puts Paige in danger. Um, it was a great fun ride. I really enjoyed it. There was some humour in it. Um, there was some fun times in it um, for both people. And I really enjoyed it. I looked forward to reading it. And I believe it's the beginning of a series. Again, it's one that... I would consider reading more in the series, not right now, it's not a series that I immediately want to move on with, but I probably would pick up more by this author in the future. I do like um, historical novels, historical romances um, of this kind. Uh, I don't tend to like the ones that are set around Regency England and that sort of period set in London. I find those to be a bit too too much dubious consent but this one she seemed to have done it really really well um everything anything that happened between the main couple was fully consensual uh which i like and i find is quite lacking in historical romances sometimes but i do find that with the more northern of the historical romances they seem to be less uh dubious consent based so i'm looking forward to reading more from this author in the future so the fifth book that I finished in March and the final book that I'm going to talk about in this video is Crave by Felicity Heaton. This is book two of her vampire erotic theatre series and it's set around main character Callum who is a vampire. He and three other vampires run um, a theatre in London uh, which is based around the supernatural and as the name suggests, it's an erotic theatre, so you get to see sexual acts played out on stage. Um, and Callum is a talent sourcer for the theatre. He has travelled to France, and while there he comes across Christina, who is a werewolf shifter. And he is very, very intrigued by her, and she by him. Christina, sadly, is on the run from her pack. Um, in the UK and she is hiding out so she doesn't want other werewolf shifters to know who she is or where she's from because um, in Felicity Heaton's version of this world werewolves know who each other's pack is just by their scent 
but she takes up with Callum, she spends a delightful week with him and then she disappears and Callum has to track her down and then save her from the peril that she finds that she's in. I've always enjoyed Felicity Heaton's writing, this book was no exception. It's book two in her series. Um, I didn't immediately want to move on. I have kind of binge read Felicity Heaton over the years and she's not an author that I, I automatically would pick up anymore. I think because I read too much in one go. Um, but I'm very glad that when I do pick her books up, when they come up um, on my TBR, I, I really do enjoy it. And I decided that it was time. I haven't read anything by her for a few months, so it was time for a read of another one and to knock another one off of the list. And so I was glad to see this one come up when it did. So those were the first five books that I finished in the month. Um, the videos are going to be quite long, so I've decided to split this up into two. So there will be a part two going up next week. Um, I, as always, did you have a good reading month? If you did or if you didn't, let me know in the comments down below. I, again, I'd love to chat with you all there about your picks, what you read in March and what I read in March and whether we all enjoyed them or not. And let me know if you've read any of these books as well and what you thought of them. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And I put videos up every single Monday or four Mondays of the month. And I will see you all again in my next one. Bye.